That reminds me, of Granville, I must reorder them uh, bottled plums. <laughs> They're going very well at the moment. They're Victorias, aren't they? No, they're Stephanie's. <laughs> Okay, make a signal to the fleet. <clears throat> I'm progressing, uh, progressing against impossible odds. Stop. Wounds, terrible, but still photogenic. Stop. I'm engaging the enemy. Stop. Love to Lady Amanda. Stop. All right. Dive, dive, dive. <laughs> Excuse me, Commander. Have you finished stacking them tomatoes? Stop. It's not quite what I had in mind, you know, for the first volume of my life story. Tomato stacker. <laughs> no. It's going to be really nice, that, isn't it? There'll be, there'll be me standing there in my white tuxedo with a red rose in my lapel, and I'll be swanning into the casino at Monty, and there'll be this hush, and a whisper will be running round the great salon. <gasps> Mon Dieu, that is him, that is Granville. He's a tomato stacker. <laughs> Would you rather it was cheese biscuits? Would you rather be a cream cracker stacker? <laughs> Youth is passing me by. Life keeps poking me with its finger. Yes, yeah, your mother had the same problem. <laughs> Reminding me, Granville, that he's not the pullover of a hunter-killer. That the hunter killer pullover was knitted for you with a very reasonable by Mrs. Tattersall. She was a compulsive knitter, was my Mrs. Tattersall. Her fingers used to move like a, a flock of sparrows. Must have bestowed untold the benefits on my Mr. Tattersall. <laughs> he was never without a smug air of satisfaction in his warm woolly jumpers. Admit it. Look, these are not the trousers of an ace of the space race. No, and yeah, you keep them that way. I don't want anyone who racing for the space in your trousers. <laughs> I just look uncombed. Not my hair. It's the rest of me that looks like it's just rolled out of bed. I'm just not streamlined. Well, you're not wearing your cycle clips. <laughs> what a drag factor of a bingo hall. Yes, there's a lot been there dragged round the back of that bingo hall. Well, I'm supposed to be an executive. I've told a certain young lady that I am an executive. If she's so certain, why are you giving her a pack of lies? It's not a pack of lies. You said I was under manager. You know, when I, when I asked for that raise, you said instead I could be under manager. Well, yeah, you are. Mm. We're well under. <laughs> if I'm supposed to be an executive, I should dress like an executive. Look, never mind being so Hungarian and uh, bolshe. Go and answer that bell. What's bolshe? Bolshe is short for Bolshevik. <laughs> What's Bolshevik? A Bolshevik is a Russian for Hungarian. Now go get on with it. <laughs> Chase Dusty Bin. <laughs> good day to you, sir. And a very good day it is. Oh. How can you say sell them things if they won't stand still? You are, I take it, the uh, proprietor of this thriving establishment? Well, I... Uh, uh... <laughs> he's get gone again. I hope he's not selling yo-yos. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> My card, sir. Oh, oh, yes. Well, it's obvious that this is a very thriving establishment, but are you sure there isn't something you've not yet caught up with? Something... 
something which with constant use could transform your shopkeeper's life and give you that confidence that comes from always being on top of things? Oh, yeah, yes, there is, there is, yeah. Lives across the road, he's called Gladys Emmanuel. <laughs> Have you tried what's available these days in the latest technology? I don't think that's a question one gentleman ought to ask another, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried this superb, super little cleaner? Little? That in any communist country, the three families have been living in that. <laughs> oh, come, so when you consider the power that that produces, that is a marvel of miniaturisation. Yes, that's what they said about my little Uncle Dudley, you know. Didn't stop him say, slipping down the drain, did it? <laughs> that is a byproduct of the American Moon Project. Now, just a minute, sir. Since when has it been an American moon? What part of the world are you from? Attercliffe. Oh, Attercliffe. Oh, well, that explains it, doesn't it? In this particular little backwater, sir, it happens to still be known as the Yorkshire moon. People set their black puddings by it. <laughs> Unmarried maidens dance by the light of it in clogs and shawl. Whippets turn unaccountably restless. You what? Maidens still wearing clogs and shawls? Come off it. Oh, <laughs> yes, get clogs and shawls. Can you still be found? It's the maidens are getting a bit thin on the ground. <laughs> or rather, uh, plump on the ground. We are an area heavy in uh, calories, you see. Mainly on account of our delicious uh, local products. Now, for instance, have you ever tried one of these wonderful pepper pork pe pies? All that is not pepper pie is pepper pe pork. And all that is not pepper pork is pepper is pepper pie. So that's where pepper fifty percent pepper pork and pepper and pepper and pepper. Well, you can work it out for yourself. Can't you? Delicious, I'm sure. Yes. But have you ever considered the Victor Vac? The super all-purpose commercial cleaner. He comes in here and tries to sell to me. Yes, I do, sir. Oh. I intend to sell you one of these truly remarkable machines. All right, then. All right, then. Go on, then. Have a go. I like a challenge. But before we start, <laughs> 73p for the pie. <laughs> Thank you. I'll just uh, wrap it for you. <laughs> executive. I am. I am an executive. Honestly, Stephanie, I am an executive. <laughs> no, I'm just road testing the shop bike for my assistant. Um. Who was that whittle that just went past? <laughs> Stephanie with a PH. The PH, eh? Yes, I can see it from here. She just moved here. She works in the boutique. Music all day. And miniskirts as far as the eye can reach. <laughs> it's all I've ever wanted, you know. For Christmas was a Stephanie with a PH. You'll get one one of these days. What, dressed like this? You'll get a nice girl. Oh, I know, that's what I'm afraid of. It's all I'm fit for, <laughs> dressed like this. boy they're doing down your blouse <laughs> well, come on granville out of the undergrowth go on <laughs> it's time you bought that lad some decent clothes he looked uh, pretty well wrapped up to me there's a girl he wants to impress it's what he was impressing you just now i'm worried about <laughs> hey if you want to keep your ears warm get a muffler <laughs> stop shouting in the street you're like a big girl 
You can talk. <laughs> this is a time of high dirt attention for me. I'm in there locked in mortal combat with the ace salesman of the Victavac Super All-Purpose Commercial Cleaner. Well, I wish him luck. If he's trying to sell you something, you've got to admire his recklessness. He's hot stuff, is him. It's no time for me to be looking out the window and seeing my fiancé covered in such sticky errand boy. Oh, I'm going to work. I haven't time to be standing here with middle-aged gropers. <laughs> Grocers. How's that for a Freudian slip? I'll be over late if her for a bit of supper. You might be lucky. Oh, good. Then afterwards we can have a bit of supper. <laughs> Will there be anything more, Mrs. Bickerdyke? No, that's all, thank you. So that'll be three pounds of seventy-eight, please. Yes, How's uh, Mr. Bickerdyke? Oh, about the same. Stupid. Yes. Well, <laughs> it's nice to know some things that don't change, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And how's your Granville? Oh, we all have our uh, problems. Mm. Sometimes there's a wild look in his eyes. Yeah. I told him I'd uh, blame them the jockey shorts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've said to him, they're all right for, for jockeys. Mm. He's at a funny age. I had nothing but trouble with mine at that age. I had nothing but trouble with yours at that age. <laughs> they used to do it in my doorway. Do what? Well, whatever it is they were doing. I used to find the fag, uh, fag ends and the, and the, the toffee uh, papers and discarded bits of, of underclothing, canary seeds. <laughs> Makes you think there's a canary seed. I used to say to him, hit him, you're their father, hit him. He were too damned idle. If we'd only had three or four, it might have been different, but seven. He used to say, who the hell's got time to go round eating seven? <laughs> he never really put his back into anything. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> seven children. <laughs> All right, you don't want the victor back. But you are going to fall for this little beauty. Hey, that's him. Yes, he's in and out of here a lot of times. He buys a lot of groceries, actually. <laughs> An air humidifier. 
Every shopkeeper's premises needs the benefits of an efficient air humidifier. And this is a little cracker. And I am the ace salesman of the Victor Vac Company who's going to convince you. Well, they don't stand there with the door open and bring in your air humidifier. You're causing a draft. <laughs> I shouldn't have believed it were you. Oh, I, it's, uh, it is me, all right. Yes. Just trotting back from uh, an executive meeting. God, these interminable meetings. Is that your old bike? Eh? <laughs> My old bike? Oh, what would I be doing with an old thing like that, eh? <clears throat> well, uh, hmm? what are you doing round here, then? Oh, I'm waiting for a taxi. Yes, it's unbelievable the trouble one has to go to. To taxi, find a cab. Yeah, I suppose you must find the same. Hmm. Yes. In my experience, you can never find a cab in this town. <laughs> oh, look, there's one. Good heavens. <laughs> Don't look very safe to me. Looks all right to me. Oh, well, must push. <laughs> Arkwright's executive stores. I'll show you the way. your tongue to the bone. I should have stayed in bed. I'm up at seven. Shaving. Clean shirt every morning. Shoes. Polished. <laughs> Green anchor in me top pocket. Diploma from the College of Salesmanship. And then you meet some rock hard pillock like that. <laughs> I, I, I don't get anything. <laughs> I, I very rarely get past evil intentions, do I? Supposing someone were to come in and find you rolling me about behind the counter? Well, uh, why not, I should think. Things have come to a, a pretty passive a tobacconist that can't roll his own. <laughs> anyway, you're a medical person. We could say it was an emergency. It damn near was an emergency. Oh. <laughs> well, well. Casanova, you're just about to get your comeuppance. What? Here comes your other woman. What, what the, the, the Black Widow? She, she's not going to come in her uppance in here. Uh, hide me, hide me, hide me. Oh, not alone, Arkwright. You're a hard man to catch alone. I'm just going. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's just, just going uh, after she's had a look at my, my leg. What's wrong with your leg? Oh, I've got this horrible leg. And numerous matching accessories. <laughs> I always thought you seemed very fit for your age. No, it's just, just a bluff, that. I, I try to put a good face on things. I can't believe you're unsound fundamentally. Well, no, maybe not very fundamentally, no. Me, me fundament's fine. <laughs> it always struck me as a tower of economy. Such a powerful grip on life and money. 
I've always held you up as an example to the entire area. Say what you like about Arkwright, but there's nobody can hold a candle to him when it comes to being mean. <laughs> You've noticed. Mean? Mean? mean. Well, why don't you look for someone of similar tastes who could devote her entire life to the welfare of your bad leg? Well, I'm off. There you. Watch your blood pressure. Hey, no, don't off, don't. And mind your bad leg. No, oh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm a spendthrift. I'm, I'm a rare, reckless with money. I'm known as the uh, playboy of the Grocers Federation. Oh, not you, never you. Oh, I, I've been in a centerfold twice. Yes, a play grocer of the month. I was on, on a bed of lettuce like that. <laughs> <clears throat> could I, could I have two pounds for a taxi? Two pounds. Two pounds for a taxi? Yes, yes, well, why not? Help yourself. <laughs> Help yourself from the till, lad. Go on. Day to you, Mrs. Featherstone. You're not sending your errand boys by taxi now, are you? Yes, well, why not? <laughs> it's it's only money. Well, I never thought I'd live to see the day. Well, there, there you are, then, you see. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wasting my time in here. You're obviously not yourself. You're obviously going through some male middle-aged cash flow crisis which has temporarily turned your head. I'll come back when your sanity's returned. Why are you dressing him like an executive? I'm uh, going to execute him in the morning. Taxi? <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a uh, bowler hat. I'll kill him. <laughs> if that doesn't kill me first. I, uh, he said, um, what about the tip? <laughs> tip? The tip? Oh, if he wants a tip, does they send him in here? We'll give him the, the, the tip of your umbrella! <laughs> Hey, good evening, uh, young missy. You didn't see a lad uh, wearing a funny hat or riding a bike, did you? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, then never mind. Uh, what can I help you to spend? Well, actually, uh, I'd like to see your superior. Well, my superior? <laughs> my, my superior uh, what? I'm spoiled for choice. Your employer. My, uh, her whom? Granville, the young executive in charge, the chief person here. Oh, that employer. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm afraid he... Uh, I'm afraid he's out at the moment, just uh, repossessing a little bit of uh, transport, as a matter of fact. Well, I'm expecting him uh, back any moment. In fact, I can hardly wait. Oh, I said I'd probably find his faithful old assistant behind the counter. Oh, yeah. But to ask for the executive in charge personally. Oh, really? I see. And what else did he say, this little executive supremo? Well, uh... Oh, he says he gets on tremendously well with his staff. Oh, yeah. oh he's had some of you for years. <laughs> he says you all love him. Oh, we do, we do. We, can, we call him a, a little father, you know. Oh, <laughs> I think that's lovely, little father. Yes, on, a, on account of his hobby. Hobby? Well, he's Hungarian. Did, didn't he tell you that? That might give you some, some idea what hobby. <laughs> oh, here he comes now, look. Here, back from his little fathering. There he is. <clears throat> Hello, Stephanie. Hello. Hello. Did you uh, manage to get it back all right, sir, the uh, the transport? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's all right. It's around the back. Oh, very good, sir. It's all present and correct, is it? No damage, is there, sir? Upholstery, uh, wing mirror, a pump, bell. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, very, very good, sir. Very good, sir. I never knew you were Hungarian. Oh, who let that little secret out, eh? Your assistant here's just been telling me. Yes, I hope I uh, didn't speak out of turn, Excellency. <laughs> no, 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 that's all right, uh, old chap. <laughs> uh, well, actually, yes. Granville, I was wondering if you'd care to walk me home. I come across some very funny people on my way home sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you will tonight, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly, Stephanie. I'll, I'll just uh, slip out of this executive finery and put on something uh, racy but cool. You know, we might want to drop into a bar somewhere for cocktails, might my, my, my. <laughs> And the night is young, isn't it? Well, I've got to be up quite early. Yes, and not as early as a young Mr Granville. <laughs> to, 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 no, no, I, was, I, I only need a couple of hours sleep. Yes, you can get them during the day, as usual, can't you? <laughs> All right, thank you. I shan't be long. 
Well, will you be all right here with, um, with this old uh, reprobate? <laughs> yes, yes, take your time. Thank you. And while you're gone, your assistant here can tell me all about you. <laughs> no, no, don't you take any notice of him. No. <laughs> yes. Now, you just behave yourself. <clears throat> Albert. <laughs> That's right, little father, to take your time. You can't beat her Hungarian feet for speed, you know. You should have seen his father leaving his mother. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry I was leaning on the counter there for a moment. It's all go being of a faithful old assistant, you know. <laughs> How does he come to be half Hungarian? Uh, well, his uh, mother was learning the language and she, she forgot the word for no. <laughs> oh, well, don't suppose it need make any difference in being half Hungarian? To us, I mean. Us? Oh, you mean uh, us? Oh. It does. It makes a difference. Mm. What kind of difference? Well, I, I don't think I ought to tell you, really. Well, I think you should warn me if there's something I ought to know. Oh, yeah, but I mean, is it proper, me being a faithful old assistant? Yeah, it's proper, it's proper. On the other hand, why should I keep quiet when his wife and kids never stop rabbiting about it? Wife? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, How many it. kids? Kids? Oh, uh, <coughs> uh, <laughs> Seven. Seven? Yes, and, th and three sixteenths, it says here. I must get that fixed. I don't know what's the matter with it. Now, I don't want you to, to treat him or judge him to too harshly. I'll kill him if he comes near me again. Yes, well, that doesn't sound too harsh. <laughs> I, I blame the goulash, you know. I think if I'd been brought up knee-deep in goulash, I might have had seven kids myself. Deceitful monkey. Yeah. Of course, fortunately, being a true northerner, I was brought up on bread and dripping, which, as we all know, is a fine antidote against any uh, wildness of the senses. Here, when it comes down, give him that. OK, let's hear it for Brad. <laughs> Well, let's hear it for these snappy threads. <laughs> Tonight it's go, man, go. I think I'll let the old boy close early, let him go home to his lonely bed. <laughs> Where is she? Where, where's Steph? You've done it again, haven't you, eh? You've really screwed it up for me. What do you do to her? Just a bit of faithful old assistanting. Oh, dear. I'll never get anything right, do I? I thought she was the one. I thought she had everything. And the moment I saw her, I knew she wasn't right for you. She's no education. She spelt a two-timing little creep with a K. <laughs> It's been a funny day working for Granville. I'll say this, for a young executive, he's very easily led. You just grab the chain round his neck and pull him along by his dangler. <laughs> Still, if you can't dangle when you're young, when can you dangle? And the first correct answer to that wins a holiday for two in Nurse Gladys's bedroom. <laughs> oh, she's like a drug, that woman. Not freely available, except for medicinal purposes. <laughs> Still, who knows? One day, I may be able to get her over the counter. <laughs>